Catholic Catholic Church. I'd like to welcome you all and to our grounds and to this forum. And I pray that uh, our gathering here today uh, will be a truly fruitful one. And so once again, welcome. And let us invite God in our presence and put a word of prayer. As always, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Loving God, faithful God, we bless you. We thank you for um, the gift of this beautiful new day. We thank you for blessing us, especially with the gift of life for gathering us together uh, this morning. We thank you for the gift of uh, the, our Council of Catholic Women and who have organized this forum in conjunction with the NNSCP. We thank you, Lord and God, for all the speakers at this forum and for all who have responded to the invitation to be part of our conversation today. We pray that you will give us more insight into the issues of family and into the issues of the children that you gift us with. May we begin in your name and may we carry along with your gracious assistance and happily end in your name to your glory and for the good of all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Award winning TV 
team of Hill's camera operations at WBTV in Charlotte in 1990. Freelancing his skills began for Thomas in 1996. For the next four years, he worked as a contract and production specialist with various Charlotte-based video production companies and the National Football League, Carolina Panthers, in between reporting for the Charlotte Post newspaper. The Central High School graduate returned to his own hometown in, two, in the year 2000, spending his first year establishing himself locally as a phenomenal wordsmith through his work as a freelance writer for the Georgia Informer and Newsville Baldwin County Bulletin. In June 2001, Thomas made history when he was appointed to the position of Director of Communications by the main first black mayor, the Honorable Clarence J. Ellis. Following the two years in Ellis administration, he joined the Megan B. Parks and Recreation in late 2003 and an athletic, co an athletic coordinator and since has worked his way to the top from the bottom. In 2014, he was awarded Program of the Year by the committee of his peers following a highly successful year at the center over which he presides. Along the way, the father of three established visionary communications a freelance operation specialist in public and media relations, writing events, planning, crisis communications, strategies, and brand marketing, photography communication, consulting, and public speaking. At this time, we will have Mr. Clarence Thomas. Thank you, Public Chief, for all your support. 
long standing support, okay? He's also joined today by uh, Major Aubrey Evans, and last but certainly not least, the big man on the end, looking sharp in the bow tie this morning, I might add, Mr. Hicks himself. Mr. Hicks himself, okay? And um, first name, Kevin Hicks, Mr. Kevin, Kevin Hicks, and he is the local attorney, okay? Give it up for these uh, fine guests we have this morning. We're going to sound on the topic of discussion, which are, by the way, today education, child support, and voters education. And we're going to begin the discussion right now with Mr. East Freedom. Ms. Freedom. Let me tell you, some of these bills that have passed 
No. They also have legislation where teachers, if the principal or the Board of Education deems that they're an ineffective teacher, the Georgia Professional Standards, which issues teacher certification, can withdraw it. And that means they can't teach no way. Mr. Crump, Benjamin Crump, 
Tyrone Brooks, the dead kid's father, and a political activist down in Alaska County. As sad as it is, they don't vote in Alaska County. Mm. Tyrone Brooks told me his own self. They have a low voting turnout in Lawrence County. Ferguson, Missouri, guess what? The same thing. The same thing. They need to get up and vote. Thank you. Anybody else with a question? Yes, sir. Uh, Reverend D. Freeman, how you doing? My name is Tony Loudon. Um, you make the statement about um, all charter schools are worse. The ones that are being created by the governor with his special board to I, I I've just, traveled what? to Louisiana, uh -huh. and I know that in New Orleans, mm -hmm. they have some decent charter schools there, but you have to understand they're not the same format that what you have or what's coming up in Georgia. Okay. If you go to North Carolina and other places like I have and visit other people who have charter schools who are saying, no, don't do this, then you see because if you look at the national test scores, they score no higher. As a matter of fact, in the last couple of years, they've scored a little lower, but they score no higher than regular public schools. So instead of popping up a different brand of education, we need to fund. Do you want me to tell you what will fix public ed education? No, ma'am, I was just asking about I was just asking about education in the state of Georgia. And we wouldn't need all these special titled schools. Can I can I can I uh, speak back to that situation? Because uh, you just you just gave them some information. I want them to know the facts because it's very important. Um, Gwinnett County has 26 failing schools on the state 141 schools failing. 26 of their 35 schools have been failing. Bibb County has 14 on that list of the 141. Macon County, which only has three schools in their whole county, have been failing kids for 14 years in a row, and this year will be 15. No break in that. The one school in Gwinnett County that is beating every school in the state is called Path Academy Charter School. They're beating Gwinnett schools and DeKalb schools by 31% in every category, reading, math, literacy, science, everything. They are 98% free and reduced lunch, which means that they are just like the kids in Bibb County, just like the kids in Harlem, just like the kids in Louisiana. Now, like yourself, I too have been to Louisiana, Michigan, California and vetted charter schools all over the state. So my question to you, how long should a parent, because you was arguing about parents' choice, how long do a parent has to wait before they get an option to move their kids out of a failing school? Because most black communities can't afford private schools. So are you telling me that we have to stay there until change happens? Can I tell you the honest to God truth? Yes, ma'am. And it's going to rock your world. Yeah. If we funded every public school the way that one you're talking about in Gwinnett County, if those other 26 schools had got the same kind of money, they'd have got the same results. But let me give you, no, no, you oh. had your piece. Let no, me say you're my You're wrong. If you Try to school C get less money. Right. Charter schools get less money. Don't give them misinformation. Please let me finish. Today. That's, that's bogus charter schools are going to be held at common core standards just like please. every other school. This school gets less money. They get $4,000 per child. Don't tell them about it. That's wrong. I don't have a best in interest. That's wrong. Say that and leave. That's wrong. Does not get as a former school board member. I can tell you in my county, it was less than two thousand dollars per child. It depends on the school and the school district, and that's what you know. People who want to go the other way are trying to say it's not. That's what's wrong with education. That's 
Wrong. Our funding Wrong process does not work. And if we fund these schools, I don't know if the gentleman who just talked is an educator, but I can tell you, educators are saying all we want to do is teach. All we want to do is make sure that every child gets a quality education. These people don't go to school for year after year to do nothing. All of them to me, and I don't usually say anything. But as a former educator, a parent of four, who I must say went to one of the best school systems in Middle Georgia, I'm having a problem with my nine-year-old right now in a Bibb County Elementary School, and I beg the difference. I beg to differ as being labeled with my children being educated as the number one cheerleader for public education in my county at that time. But I beg to differ, but you just said it. The teachers just want to teach. I beg, I, I be, I beg to differ. Now, as a former lobbyist from Joe Frank Harris, some of you may not know Joe for, until uh, Nathan Deal. And that's a lot of governors. That's a lot of governors. And hear me out. QBE was not funded. QBE was not fully funded. And everything in between QBE, and we have some teachers in here. And we have, you remember QBE? Yes. QBE, Mr. Jones, was not fully funded. Never fully funded. Now, with all of the, uh, what has happened, parenting, Parenting has been legislated out the door. Amen. Teaching has been legislated out the door. Teaching has been legislated out the door. So the root, you got to get to the root of the problem. Now, teachers, number one, are afraid to teach. They just don't want to teach. They're afraid to teach. If a child gets disrupted and they have to stop for 20 minutes and deal with that child, well, how many minutes of the 55 minutes is gone? Now, I was one of those mothers that I told my kids every morning, you going to school at a one-shot deal, pre-K through 12, is a one-shot deal in the free world. Nowhere else in the free world do we have a one-shot deal of free okay, education. So we, the, the, and some the people, problem. some people, okay. children, want to go to school to be what? Educated. Some people, children, want to go to school to sit there and get their education. Now, some other kids want to come to school, they're being disrupted because it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's not the child's fault. We don't know what's going on at home, do we? Don't know what's going on at home. And there's a lot of parents in Bill County that want to what? They want to kick it, they want to kick it out. They want to kick it out. If, if, you, if, if, you, if you go to the school right now and ask the parents, can we give you a ticket? To a private school for your child, stand up. I, I, I beg the difference how many parents will stand up for their child to get a free ticket to send their child to a private school. Yes, we have a problem with public education. We have a problem with public education. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's not going to be fixed we, overnight. We have, we have, it's not going to be fixed overnight. Well, we're going to have to let the teachers go. Uh, we have people here who are prepared to speak. You're not going to have speeches from the floor. You get up and ask a question. And you, Reverend Freeman has to leave, so we gave the privilege for those who had questions for her to go in here and ask them of her before she has to leave. So if anybody has any direct questions from, the, from Reverend Freeman, we'd like to take them. No speeches from the floor. Is that the education right now, today, because of these bills, is going down the tube in every school? Yes, ma'am. Every and school every is going to have the answer to these laws. And what do you think we should do? People want to get out of vote. Not just that. One. We got to do something else. Okay. okay. Number one, one these are the bills you need to write down. We need to stop this legislation. House Bill 91. Senate Bill 89, Senate Bill 156, House Bill 747, 
174, Senate Bill 132, Senate Bill 133, Senate Bill 164, and Senate Bill 2. You need to call your local state representative, state senators, and ask them to vote no on that legislation. And hopefully, I'm going to Athens after I leave here to speak with another group. And hopefully, what we've been doing is a partner of mine, myself, I've been traveling around the state, going over all these bills and all this legislation, teaching people exactly what it says, line by line, and what it means, and then having a conversation. So it's usually a three-hour session. My email and phone number is over on the table where I signed in. Please get it. And um, thank you. And God bless all of you. And if I had presented myself as Reverend Freeman, I never do. But I just want you to think about this. My mom raised me 10 children. You always treat your company with respect. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Freeman. We, we were also joined a little while ago by Ms. Phyllis Blake with the uh, State Conference of the NAACP. Uh, Welcome her, please, if you would. Thank you, Ms. Blake, for making coming out today. And what we want to do, panelists, is we want to make sure that we keep it kind of tight, okay, because we are trying to honor the time, of course. So we want to confine our presentations, if you would, to about five minutes. Also, we wanted to make sure that occasionally you cut your eyes over at Dr. Kujo, who is uh, our official timekeeper, if you would. She's going to be signaling you in the back, okay? So, uh, and audience, what we want to do, the format is, um, going forward, and we wanted to get Ms. Friedman on the road, if you would, but the official format is following these presentations following all of these presentations, then we're gonna open up the floor for questions and, and answers. Am I correct, Madam President? So what we wanna do now is, uh, and that was some very passionate discourse as you heard concerning education. And that's, that's what we need. It's okay to uh, respectfully and civilly disagree. There's nothing wrong with that. And public discourse is needed concerning education because education should be the top priority in the state of Georgia for our children. And so we thank everybody who, uh, who commented uh, just a few minutes ago um, and respected, and respected in the end, respected each other's uh, positions, if you would. Of course, we can always continue, and it's good that Ms. Friedman uh, provided her contact information. Make sure that if you want to um, talk to her further about it or hear from her further about it, when you get her contact information. I think it was just on the real table in the back. We're going to move on now, and our next person that's going to be speaking is Ms. Patricia Smith. Please welcome her, if you would. And she is the director of the Child Support. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, I would like to say that it was definitely an honor. I saw it as a privilege to be able to stand before you and talk about the division of child support and to just give you an overview of some of the initiatives that we have in place within the Division of Child Support. Um, currently, I want to mention our vision. Our vision within the Division of Child Support is stronger families for a stronger Georgia. And basically what that means is we're empowering our families that we're served um, to help them to become more self-sufficient. Our mission is to strengthen Georgia by providing individuals and families access to services that promote self-sufficiency, independence, and protect Georgia's vulnerable children and adults. And our core values that we operate under are that we provide access to resources that offer support and empower Georgians and their families. Additionally, we deliver services professionally and we treat all of our customers, all of our clients with the utmost dignity and respect. And additionally, we promote accountability, transparency, and quality in all of the services that we provide. So basically, 
we have measures in place to ensure that we're doing exactly what we need to be doing for the families that we're serving. Just to give you some examples of some of the initiatives that we have in place, our current value statements are to put children first. So what that basically means is we operate under the model that children need both parents. They don't need just the mother, they need the father also. And we also realize that there are times when non-custodial parents experience barriers that prevent them from being able to pay their child support in a timely manner. And I'll provide more information about the outreach that is available to, to those non-custodial parents. Additionally, we're working with the Governor's Initiative, which is an alternative to incarceration. That program is actually entitled the Problem Solving Court. Mr. Stephen Giglio is our Problem Solving Court coordinator here in the Macon area, and he's going to give you more information about what Problem Solving Court actually does for our non-custodial parents. Also, in attendance today, we also have the Macon office manager, Ms. Monica Hall. So she's available as well once we get to the question and answer portion. And also is Sherry Sashington, who's the operations analyst for state operations. Okay? To give you a little bit more information on the Division of Child Support, we're currently under the umbrella of the Georgia Department of Human Services. Our current commissioner is Mr. Keith Horton. Our director of the Division of Child Support Services is Ms. Tangela Gray Johnson. And our deputy director is Mr. Reed Kimber. Um, as the Director of State Operations within the Division of Child Support, I'm responsible for actually overseeing the outreach for the division and the policy and fraternity that governs what we do. So as a result of this appointment, I'm responsible for ensuring that everything that we do is in compliance with not only federal law, but state law. So we have processes in place to continue monitor what we do to ensure that we're doing what we need to. Just to give you some statistics from the Division of Child Support, on a national level, 6% of families receive TANF, 45% of families formerly receive TANF, and 49% of families have never received TANF. Nationally also, child support represents 45% of the total family income for poor families. Additionally, child support represents 16% of the total family income for the average family. Child support is a cost recovery agency. So an average of $9 million is collected on an annual basis as reimbursement to the state treasury for public assistance. So basically this means for those individuals that may receive TANF, may receive public assistance, we have programs in place to ensure that those monies are collected through child support to add back to the state treasury. Just to give you some of our demographic information, we currently have nine regions in the Division of Child Support, which are located geographically throughout the state of Georgia. We have 58 local child support offices, and we currently have 1,334 employees that do the work of child support. Some of our statistics is that currently there are 533,252 children who are receiving, who are served financially through a child support order. Additionally, if every non-custodial parent paid on time every month, it would provide $1 billion per year on behalf of the children in Georgia. So that's just the statistics to let you know what would happen if support was paid. Um, one of the outreach key initiatives that we have within the Division of Child Support is the fatherhood program. Basically, the focus of the fatherhood program is to provide re-entry services, and this is basically non-custodial parents that may have faced barriers in paying their support due to um, prison or incarceration. We have services that focus on that, and it's basically education and employment. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Great job with that. All right, time, most of all. And thank you, Dr. Kujo. I see you back here for that timekeeper. Okay. Uh, next up, we want to allow Ms. Uh, uh, actually, we're going to hear from the Sheriff's Office now. Okay. And our uh, next speaker is going to be Mr. Carlos. Come on. Thank you. 
see a man who has barriers in the past, he can be child support. Some of those barriers could be lack of driver's license, you know, the program in your life is bad. It could be something like um, an education where you don't have a GED. So we get them in the training we need for either the GED or we get them in the Georgia Work Ready program, or we work with some Georgia Tech, one of our partners to help. Um, basically, I'm a resource coordinator as well. I put resources in place for these uh, individuals that they can succeed. They can have a second chance uh, to come out and do, um, do what they want to do and be able to support the families. Um, briefly, I just want to touch on last week we had a graduation class of five. I just want to tell you some of the success rates. Now, five individuals graduated last week. Um, and 12 months prior coming into the program, they had paid a total of $16,000 in child support. Okay, it sounded like a lot of money, but they were all behind, they were all in the tent, and some of those guys were in jail for not paying child support. In the time that they were in the program, they paid over $32,000 in child support. They succeeded to get their license back, we even got their jobs, we helped the child place, we tried to do all the things we can to put them in a better situation. So in short, that was a 95% increase from where they were before to where they were at the end of the program. So we believe the numbers can show us an excellent chance for folks to succeed. Um, I want to say also, I just want to say also, from the time we started in April of 2013, um, we collected right now $50 short of $90,000. Now, that sounds like a lot of money, and it is. But this is for folks, uh, our customers who have paid nothing, or have paid very little, uh, prior to coming into the program. $90,000 new dollars. They're going to children and families. It's $90,000 new dollars because no other parents are getting to take care of the kids. And guess what? Relationships are getting better. Not custodial parents, custodial parents seem to all more. It's just all around a good thing for our community that this money is coming in. And it's a good thing to be in.